Well, I, I guess I kind of think that the better question would be to start with what is, what, what is leadership not, uh, if I can word it that way. Leadership is not position or title. And the reason why I say that with confidence is because uh, there are a lot of leaders who, who don't have the followership of their people. There's a lack of trust, there's a lot of dissension, there's high employee turnover. So I don't think that we can necessarily say that just because somebody holds a position or, or carries a title, that they are necessarily a leader. Uh, conversely, we see people in organizations that do not have a title and do not have a position and yet they are some of the most highly influential people within that organization. So now back to the question at hand, what is leadership? Leadership is the effective influence, the positive influence of a person or a group. So I guess, I guess if we're going to say what drives influence, then the word that I would have to put in there would be communication. Um, there's one part of me that wants to say uh, it depends on who your followers are, but then there's another part of me that would say that the primary thing that we do here at ExecuSpec is we, we teach, develop, and help our clients master transformational and servant leadership. So if I were to have to identify two leadership styles, I would say that it would be those two. In, in fact, I would say that the foundation of effective influence is servant leadership. And we have competencies that we discuss that, that define servant leadership. And then of course, with once you have that foundation of servant leadership, then you can build your organization and build your team through transformational leadership. So essentially, transformational leadership is the, is the ongoing change of an organization by changing the people within the organization. And you can't change people within the organization without having that foundation of servant leadership. So we connect that those two leadership styles through communication. But I would say this, if we are going to communicate with our people in the best form that we can, we have to first know them. So in other words, if I am a, if my personality uh, dictates to others that I am a strong, extroverted uh, risk taker, I'm a doer, I'm just gonna get out there and do things, and I lead by that nature, which is comfortable to me, then I'm likely gonna alienate and frustrate my, my workers who are not risk takers, who are not outgoing. They're essentially the, the strong introverts. And, and the opposite works the same way. So it, it really, it, it is incumbent upon the leader to cross the chasm that separates leadership and followership and get into the mix of the employees, learn who they are on an individual level, on an intimate basis, know what turns them on, know what turns them off, know what inspires them and what frustrates them and lead according to who they are. In other words, I have to shift my personality to match who my followers are. And then when I, when I, uh, when I have to execute the, uh, the competencies for servant and transformational leadership, it's going to be genuine. It's really going to come across to say, I care about who you are and I want you to be successful within this organization. I am shockingly impressed with the almost instantaneous changes that happen within organizations when we work with our clients. And the reason for that is because we are addressing individual needs for changes in human behavior. We're not, we're not bringing in um, best practices and principles and practical tips for people to begin to work on because our philosophy is that you can't put a fresh coat of paint on a rusty pole. Eventually the corrosion is gonna break through that, that fresh coat of paint. And the same thing is true with practices within an organization. We can come in and talk with you all day long about how you need to do this and how you need to do that and, 
and all of that kind of stuff, and they're good things, but if we don't talk about where you need to improve, or what are some of those uh, derailers that are happening in your professionalism that are keeping you from being the most effective communicator. If we don't deal with those first, then essentially we are putting a fresh coat of paint on a rusty pole. The old habits and behaviors are gonna come back out within just a few months. However, if we can strip that down, we can get rid of the corrosion and get down to the, to, to the purity of who you are and then identify those changes that have to happen in your life and in your manager's lives and, and how many ever people we're gonna be working with, then we begin to see changes that happen almost instantaneous. It doesn't take two or three years. It happens right now. So the changes that we see are that we see cohesion, we see loyalty, commitment, people are, are excited about their jobs. When we begin to talk about weaknesses, when we begin to talk about derailers and problems associated with who we are naturally, it gives people hope to say, I can be better than who I currently am and I see a future for me in this organization.